Hey y'all, welcome to Maverick Gunworks channel. Today I'm going to show you a little bit of a project that I've been working on. And um, if you got the idea of maybe upgrading or changing some of the things on your government model of 1911, here's some things that you could, should consider. Uh, to, if you're going to go order parts, make sure you understand what you're getting. Because they're not always going to be interchangeable with every 1911 made. So what I have here is this is a, a Springfield 1911 uh, in the government, government model, 5 inch barrel. Um, which had a typical, the uh, very narrow tenon front sight, beaver tail, rear sight. These are these are original sights actually right here. Very small, minimal sights for a government model is typical. And <clears throat> the customer wanted to change the sights and also wanted to change the grip safety because he, he has an issue with the grip not, not sticking out far enough Physically, he had a hard time getting the the, uh, the safety to release uh, when he grabbed the you know grabbed the grip to put a grip on the gun. This does not have a protruding bump out on it, so he had a difficult time with it uh, collapsing enough to take the safety off when he was wanting to fire the gun. So what he's done is, uh, you know, in this case, he had went ahead and ordered the parts he thought he needed. What I want to show you is uh, some of the things that you need to understand if you're going to get parts that you understand what you're getting because with the government model frame and this being in Springfield also different manufacturers have a little bit different cut on the back of the frame so not always a particular safety will fit every gun okay um, so here we have this is the original safety on it and you see the original government model hammer right? and when you cut the hammer it comes back and it's, it's not does not interfere with your safety but what we've got here is uh, the safety that he had purchased because it had the extra bump on it here and you know, a little bit uh, more of a uh, uh, a little bit more of a uh, user-friendly safety I guess you'd say because you have a larger space and it sticks out further from the frame you don't have to push it in as, as deeply to uh, say to get the safety to activate but what happened here is um, not knowing <clears throat> the differences in these safeties and we had to purchase a different aftermarket safety to make it work. Reason being, I want to show you the original safety that fit inside the frame here. Okay, and it does not have the protrusions out like this one does. This is a larger beaver tail section so that you have a little bit safer as far as grabbing the gun and getting a higher grip up on the frame and not interfere with any mechanical operation. Um, but a government government issue model is uh, minimalist at, at that. Okay, so the difference in what the uh, uh, the original purchaser had done here with this one is the type safety he was looking for. However, I'm going to hold it hold it best I can here and show you why it would not work. You can see the frame how the frame is cut in here at a 45 degree basically 45 degree angle under there, and this safety was not like that. It is meant for a gun that has more of a 90 degree cut here. So this would not work without modifying the frame or modifying the grip. With a little bit of research, I found an aftermarket safe that is made for the government model. This is a Wilson Combat, a model that is made for the government issued 1911s. So it has the cut made to fit on the frame. And that being said, it fits here, but it does not fit on the inside. And you consider when you have the hammer caught, in this case, this is also the Wilson Combat Hammer to match the safety. Reason being, because the safety is de designed differently, the original factory hammer has a much larger tab back here and it will not cock far enough back because the safety is in the way, okay? So we have to also change the hammer in this case. And with the hammer changed, it's a little bit of a short more of a compact hammer. It's called a commander style hammer, I believe. Uh, that fits into the recess on your safety grip and makes it functional. And that being the case, also I wanted to point out that a lot of these parts will have to be fitted for every gun because the, uh, the specs sometimes are not always exactly the same from manufacturer to manufacturer. And in this case, what I had to do on this one was um, I had to fit the safety so that it would operate it would go into the frame, but would not. you could not compress it far enough to let the trigger pull. 
So in this case, I had to go in and show you on this one. This is your original factory trigger. Let's get that out of the way. I mean, you know, this is your original factory ha uh, safety, rather. But what we had to do is, you see the notch right here on the back of this, uh, back of this notch right here is clearance for your trigger to recess inside the frame. And when the, when the safety is not depressed, that surface right there that I'm pointing to is what keeps you from pulling the trigger. As you grip the safety and squeeze this down, rotates up and your trigger will fit inside this notch. Well, on the aftermarket safety we just installed, there was not enough clearance for the trigger to operate. So we've had to relieve a little cut in here, make that uh, slightly larger opening so that the trigger would operate. And that's a little bit at a time. We do, um, you know, we'll file it, stone it a little bit at a time until we get it where it fits like it should. Okay, so that's just one thing you, gotta, one thing you have to watch for, be aware of. Between that and also possibly with any aftermarket safety rubbing on the frame, uh, on this surface possibly, uh, along the bottom ear down here, that it is, has clearance and fits on your frame, and also that your uh, mainspring housing fits over the bottom tab. Okay? So anyway, we did a little modifying of that one, got it to work. All right. So, with that, uh, we go over to the uh, slide. I want to show you the differences in a couple of things on the slide. This being a Springfield 1911. And this is a mill spec slide, they call it. Um, again, with aftermarket sites, you have to be aware of, in this case, the size of the tenon that is in the front sight slot. Okay, now, I uh, figured out there are three different sizes at least. So, there's, I believe it's a 52, 54 thousandths width wide tenon, uh, which is a small tenon on some of them. And the larger tenon is about 125 thousandths. But this one happens to be the Springfield model, and it turns out to be, I believe it's, uh, get my calipers and check it. If I remember right, it was uh, 80, I believe. Let's see, let me confirm that. It's about 84, 85 thousandths. Okay, so then not knowing that, um, there was a purchase made for aftermarket sites, and if I have those here, just a second. Uh, do I have those handy? Yes, I have those handy here. So this is an aftermarket site purchase for the gun. The rear site would work, but the front site, in this case, it was it was built for a Colt 1911, and the Colt 1911, in this case, is a much smaller, thinner tenon. It ended up, ended up uh, not fitting this particular frame. Okay, so that one is original. We were looking for about a 84, 85 thousandths tenon, and this one was a 55 thousandths, 56 something like that. Okay. So anyway, if you used it, you would end up with too much slop in the hole here, and uh, you, you never would get the sight tight like it should be. So anyway, we've had to back up and uh, pump or order, order a different size of sights with a tenon to fit this correctly. And as soon as we get those here, we'll go ahead and put that on. Um, but anyway, be aware, such as that, those little specific things about different models of 1911s can be the deciding factor if you end up getting a part that fits correctly and one that has to be hand fitted to each application. So, okay, I hope that'll help somebody out there. And if you've got something uh, that you need to help with on 1911 or either, any other gun possibly, uh, give us a call and if it's something that's, uh, that helped you out a little bit, give me a thumbs up and let us know that somebody's watching us. All right, thank you.